Hi, welcome back. Uh, I'm Ryan with Ocarpa Web Designs, and this is the quality check and optimization video. Um, I already recorded like half of this before, but then uh, my kids interrupted, and then uh, I totally lost track of what I was doing. So I'm just going to do it over again. Um, but I already did a few things. So number one, um, when you finish your website, uh, you know how I uh, created a bunch of you know, mobile sized images like cabinets two, cabinets two M. What we're gonna do now with all that, now that they're all the same, the right sizes that they need to be, uh, we go to compressor.io, uh, and I pay for pro. Uh, I think it's like $50 a year. Uh, and you can uh, bulk mass like uh, almost all, all almost all your images at, at once. Um, and you get a, a couple of nice features, but you know, I pay to support these guys. I like what they do. So I select my files and then literally I just copy everything. So I copy all this and then I just remove, um, let's see, control, there we go. I just remove all the SVGs. You don't need to, well, actually you shouldn't be using this to optimize the SVGs. Uh, and since I already, I already did this, there's not, there's not going to be a change. See, it's all it's all the same. Save zero, save zero. Uh, but mostly one because I already did this. When you do this, um, it could save like sixty percent, eighty percent. I think this one used to be like three hundred kilobytes. Um, but my savings when I so this is ten kilobytes. When I did this the first round, when I actually did it, uh, it saves me like six megabytes of uh, of information. So then what you do is uh, you download them all. And then you, I, I show in folder. Let's wait for it. There it is. So now it's done. We're going to right click and extract. And now we have all of our compressed and optimized images. And all we do is we go to our images folder here. We just copy, you know, control A to copy all and then just drag into your product and into your project folder and then overwrite all the images. Uh, so that will uh, compress all your images to as you know, losslessly without losing much quality to the smallest that they can be. And after doing that, uh, I ran my page speed score, and we already hit a 99. Uh, just with the way that I work, uh, how I optimize as I work, I don't have to do anything at the end. It's, it, we're, we're already building, uh, like best website we can right now. Uh, there's just a couple of things. So I think one of these is it wants me to serve up my uh, landing image in uh, WebP format, which is not a bad thing. So we're going to do a uh, Web, WebP. I think this is the one I use, Converter. Uh, Convertio. Uh, I like to use this one. I think you get 10 free a day. So let's choose a file. Um, let's go to let's use our landing mobile. Uh, we want to convert it to WebP. And let's see what happens. Let's convert this sucker. Not now. Uh, so we're going to wait for that. There it is. Okay, let's download. And I know it's terrible quality, but that's the image I had to work with. Um, but I'm going to get a better one, honestly. I don't like this one. But this is what we're going to work with right now. Uh, so this is landing. And that's the WebP. So now what we want to do is um, on our landing, I think it's uh, served up as a background image. So we have to go into local.ls. And we need to. So first, I'm going to copy this. <clears throat> so we're adding this as a background. So I'm going to put this before it. And I'm going to put my WebP here. So that if there's a browser, <clears throat> excuse me, that doesn't uh, accept this WebP, you know, this background won't run. And this is the fallback because of the cascading style of how CSS is read. Um, it's not like JavaScript where, where everything will crash and stop working. Uh, this basically just says, all right, you're not working. Screw you. Uh, who's next? And it'll say, okay, oh, this one works. All right, cool. So it, it takes the last valid input. So right now, if they didn't, except WebP, it wouldn't load. 
it would not be a valid background URL. So this would just be ignored and then it would fall back. Like, okay, well, what's next? Oh, we got this one. Cool. This works. All right, you're up. Um, so that's what we do there. And let me just make sure my uh, Koala is running. Um, local less. Cool. And I'm going to save. Over here we got, there we go. See, they're updated. So we added a new uh, web image. And we're going to commit and push. So let's see if that uh, improves anything at all. So I'm going to control shift R to hard refresh. So it clears all the cache. And I'm just going to check our hero. It's still JPEG. So let's wait. Refresh. There it is, WebP. Okay, so now we got our WebP. And let's see if um, that changes anything for analytics. Maybe that helps us get us our coveted 100, or maybe it just, you know, gets rid of that nagging flag from Google. There we go, 100. All right, that looks like, oh, and our speed index jumped by uh, 0.4. So that was pretty neat. So yeah, now we don't have that WebP thing anymore. So that's how you, that's how you do that. That's how you convert to WebP, download one, um, this is fantastic. This is, this is great. I mean, we're, we're a hundred. This is, this is great. Um, so now that we've got the page speed done, now let's do the uh, lighthouse. Let's see if there's anything in lighthouse that is glaring that we missed. So with lighthouse, we have to leave it on the page or else it won't work. So let's just see what we're missing here. Okay. So our SEO. Um, okay, that's fine. We're just going to ignore that for now because it's not done yet. Links aren't crawlable. And that means there's no, um, there's no, there's no uh, link in there. Like they're empty links. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So all of these are going to be fixed when we actually finish the website. When I add all of the pages, and I finish. So this SEO will be back to 100. Easy. Um, our accessibility, what are we missing here? Uh, background, foreground, colors do not have a high contrast ratio. Okay, so these these guys here, they don't have a high contrast ratio. So let's find out. Yeah, this is too low, 2.66. Um, so what we need to do is um, accessible color... Um, I think this is this mine. Is this the one that I use? Okay, here we go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this color. And we're gonna put it into here, into this accessible color generator. So show me the closest variations of <clears throat> this color against a white background uh, that are acceptable. So if it's small text, this is the closest color that I can use and, and pass. Um, if it's bolded text, meaning it's thicker, see, it's a little lighter. I can get away with that. But right now, we need this. Um, so I'm going to go into my code here and in my root web .css. Uh, so I'm going to have accessible. All right, so that's my accessible primary color, just a little darker. So I need to go into uh, my services. So let's go here and see services, card, picture. Hat. Wait, no, it wasn't services. Extra services. There's extra services. Um, and you see all of my stuff is collapsed because I, I closed this out. Oh wait, no, never mind. It's down here. Where it's still there, where it's still easy to use. No, that's because I closed it out. Okay. 
So we can we can either just you know wait. Actually, yep, I don't need this. Remember that. And our services in the dark mode content template. Extra services. Uh, so we're looking at the A right here. So this is going to be bar accessible. Um, and then we're going to go to the stats. That's our Y. Stats dot number. Okay, so that's going to be accessibility. Accessible colors. Accessible colors. I'm going to push. Oh, oh sorry, we're going to commit and push. And now this lighthouse. Um, so the performance one is going to be the hardest one to get, but any monkey can get hundreds on these three. Uh, so I wouldn't. You know, because I got a hundred SE on SEO on Lighthouse. Well, I mean, you should. It, that's like the bare minimum. This is just telling you, like, all the things you should be doing. Um, and just because you get a hundred doesn't mean it's the best thing in the world. It just means you did everything you're supposed to do. Uh, so that's why these these are just uh, like basically checklists. Um, and the performance one is where that's that takes some finesse, and we've already taken care of that. So let's let's refresh. Uh, that should already be loaded by now. We have to close this out, and then we have to reinspect and do our lighthouse, and hopefully um, those should come back fixed. There we go. Um, now, when I when I do fix the SEO, like those links uh, and the meta description, then this will set off a fireworks display. Uh, oh, speed index 0.9, killing it. Um, and it'll 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 be happy. So yeah, this is a full 100 100 100 website. Um, very happy with this. Uh, now there is this this glaring issue that I saw. Um, so it's a it's the only thing that's causing a content layout shift. And this is something you're going to run into a lot. Uh, it's it's the text. So right here, layout shift. It's the text right here. This is happening when you see this. It's because when your browser loads, it's loading its, brow its browser default font first, and then it's swapping out um, your font. So uh, all of my fonts are locally hosted, um, and that's ideally what you should be doing, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but what's happening is it's from the, the, the initial load of the browser default uh, fallback uh, font, when it switches and swaps to your designated font, uh, if the text is a different size, different height, uh, it will cause a layout shift of that of that text box because maybe the fallback text or font has uh, smaller characters than the font you're using, so that the the space taken up by that font that uh, that text box will not be different, and it will shift and it will. Uh, cause a layout shift because it's pushing things in the layout up and down. Uh, so that's what a layout shift is. When something loads and it's initially one size and then it either gets bigger or smaller and it pushes things around it, when it finishes loading, that's a layout shift. Uh, so that's what's causing this. So um, there is something we can do about it. Um, it's It's about choosing a like when you do your fallbacks, like when you do your font family fallback, uh, let's just do font family CSS. Let's just do something real quick. So when you choose your font right here, um, the fault this is the fallback. So what you want to try and do is choose a fallback that matches in height uh, and size of your chosen font, and that should minimize the the layout shift. Uh, I've yet to find anything that can like compare that with for you um I, I i found something in an article i was reading like a couple weeks ago but i haven't found it yet but there there are 
there should be a service out there that if you put a font, if you give it a font, it will tell you what the uh, browser fallback is that you should use and the font sizes uh, so that you can minimize that content layout shift. But it's it's not important. It's We are well within our allowed uh, cumulative layout shift. So um, I'm not particularly worried about it. Uh, I mean, we, we got 100. What else is there to do? So that's taken care of. We got 100 here. We got 100 in Lighthouse. Uh, now for the font or the font, the the fav icon, um, there's two ways to go about getting your fav icon. Um, number one is I use this generator. Uh, if I already have like when I have a logo, if I have a piece of that logo, I'll just use that as the fav icon. So I'll do this. I'll choose this. Um, let's just let's just pick this guy right as a fav icon, just for example. Continue with this picture, just do it. You see it, it'll it'll show you what it looks like on light and dark. Uh, and then you come you come down and then you generate your fav icons in HTML code. And then once that's done, um, this is the HTML that you copy and paste into your website. So uh, in our all your pages need to have this on them. It's all of my uh, my template has this part of it. So this is your fav icons, uh, and this is for your social media stuff, um, where you put in the title. Like when someone shares this page on social media, this will be the title. This is the description. This is the website URL, and this is the image URL that will show up in that little display. Um, so I'll show you how to get those um, on your title to, well actually let's finish this so now you can download your fav icon package and all you really do you just again extract these guys and then this, these are your fav icons so now you go to your um, root directory which is the, this, the the main folder where everything else lives you see I already got my fav icons here you just take these select all and just drag them in here and you put them in your root directory where your index file lives. Actually, we don't need this either. Remove that. Um, and then, then you're good to go. That those are your fav icons. That's how you do it. Uh, so now, when you have your fav icons, your title tag, what you need to have in here that is the most optimal, um, have their keywords. So we're home um, home construction specialists, right? That's one. And then you want to do like a pipe, and then the town. Washington. That's a, that's another keyword qualifier, and then and then you do their name on the top construction. So your titles should generally look like this. Um, you got your keyword and what they need to know about you. You got your location so that you can, um, it, like, if you're trying to target locally, uh, this will show up in the title tag of this page and people see, oh, they're a home construction specialist. Oh, they're right here in town. And then there's the name. There's the, the, but this is, this is what matters. This is what you want. Um, and then once we have that done, what you need to do is um, generate your site map. So I just use a generator. Uh, and then you copy and paste your website here. So let's do that now. Where are you at? Uh, here. Copy paste and start so this this crawls your website uh, for all your pages and it generates a sitemap for you for um, uh, the Google search console to pick up so we're gonna view details we're gonna download our map I'm gonna open this in in, uh, in the downloads and all you do again um, is in your root directory just you know I because I do so many sitemaps uh, we're gonna rename you just it just has to be sitemap. Not well. Apparently, I already have one in here in this folder somewhere. So we're going to drag this over, and then we're going to rename it sitemap. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Um, when we open this, it's a, it's just an XML file. Uh, it has your pages for you. Uh, but I'm going to delete this because this is not the actual. It'll have have all the website links. Get out of there. Like it's. It's pulling, you know, the .netlc.app 
Uh, see down here, .net, the fee app. That's not the actual website, uh, so we don't want that. But that's how you do it. Um, and then if you're not using uh, Koala, like I use it to um, to do to handle the um, like when I when I click on this auto prefix, it will prefix everything for me. What I do is I go to auto prefix or .io, um, and then on your CSS. So if you have a CSS file, we just take your your CSS, Control A, Control C to copy. Right here, we paste it, and then it will take so like the flex box and stuff. Like right here, yeah, yeah. I think we can see it up top. So we got to display flex, justify content, align items. We need browser browser prefixes for those so that they work across uh, all browsers, and that's exactly what it does here. It puts all of these in for you, uh, so you don't you don't even have to think about it while you're working. Just work, get it done, and then you know let it let it prefix everything for you. And then all I do is I literally I copy, I control A, control C, open up here, control A, control V to paste, and then I and then I save. It's it's all done for me. That's it. Uh auto prefixing. Uh <clears throat> and then when you get when the site is done, I use Dr. Link check to check for any 404s or uh, bad pages. So we're going to take uh, our link here, and we're going to create a new one. Advanced settings, we're going to do ignore robots.txt. And then this will show you any bad, like, obviously, I'm going to have a bunch of them, probably, because all my links are empty. See, it shows me all of my 404s. I have a ton of them. So these are all probably unused images. Um, like we got port five. Let's see the details. It's on my home page. What's the source code? Uh, looks like it's right here. It's not. We got a uh, we got a four hundred four for this for some reason. And it looks like it's just for port five. We got about image. Where's that four hundred four? Okay, that's in the um, that's landing. That's in the about section. So yeah, that's not popping up. So we got to okay. Oh, this is on the about page. So yeah, there's there's no about image. Uh, those are empty. So it tells you where all your empty dead links are in your um, in your images because those are still 404s and those get caught. So I would just have to go through and see all the pages that these are on uh, and fix them. And then when you have none, everything is is all good. Um, and then I think that is it for like my uh, my end of website optimizations and quality control checks. Uh, we already we already checked our accessibility on Lighthouse. Everything looks fine there, normal. We we have our ARIA labels and attributes that are in our site that are helping screen readers uh, use it more efficiently. Um, it's already performing as best as it can. We have our site map. We got our fav icons. We did our link check. We did our HTML validation. Um, and I think, I think that you mean you can, you go through your process so many times, and then when you actually have to like record it and tell people about what you do, you feel like you're missing some things. Like, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to miss anything. Um, Oh yeah, that's right. I gotta show you guys how to preload a font. So go to Google Fonts Helper. This is what I use. Um, so I think we're using Lotto. I actually, I actually, I, I have to do this because I'm not. I don't think I'm using the right fonts. What are we doing? Uh, this is Roboto. I need Lotto. Right? Yeah, I need Lotto. So let's download Lotto. And there are two ways you can do this. So number the first one is to look at your site. And so right away, I know I need a bold. So I need a bold. Um, and I think that's it. There's no 500s. I try to, <clears throat> I try to use as few uh, font 
like weights as possible. So literally, I in, in my site, I just try to have a bold uh, and a regular. I think let's see what this is. is this bold or black? Okay, bold and regular. So that's because that's that's fewer uh, characters you have to download. So like every uh so like this is okay so this is the subsets let me just get into this a subset so like uh you got your latin text all of these fonts have different subsets like it like um uh you got your other symbols with like those tildes on top uh you got your kind of foreign letters and all these other weird characters and special characters that you almost never use so that's why i like using the font helper because i get to choose which subset I want. So I don't want any of that all those crazy ones. That'll just make my font so, font so, uh, font file a huge size. So I choose Latin, which is by default. So I only choose the regular, you know, A through Z characters and numbers, etc. So we're not getting all that extra nonsense. But the problem is for every font weight that you add, you're also adding every single character again in that weight. So when I add bold, I'm now doubling the size of this file. When I add um, black, I'm now tripling the size of this file. So there are, there's another uh, way of doing your fonts that I was reading about yesterday night, actually, is um, using the browser's um, like default um, guesstimations for when you do italic and bold. So you only need to download the regular, like if you're concerned about this, you only download the regular and then you let the browser uh, kind of just make its best guesses for bold and italic. Uh, I forget what it's, what it's called when you do that, but that is another option if you're really trying to optimize your website as best as possible. Um, I'm just gonna do, since I got, I'm just gonna do bold. I'm just gonna take it because as you've seen, my website's already 100. I mean, I don't think, I don't think it'll make it worse, and it's only two. So we're gonna do. Uh, I don't have any italics. I don't try to do italic letters because uh, then that's another subset I have to I have to load in. So let's just do these two. We're gonna select modern browsers, and this will give you your font face. So you just literally uh, take these, give it to me, copy, and uh, you you've seen this in my file before. They're up here. We're gonna take these font faces. We're gonna paste it. And then they don't they don't have this in here for you, but you have to put it font display swap. Uh, you need this. Google will yell at you if you don't use this. So now I need um, where's wherever I see Roboto, replace with Lato. Good. Okay. Well, I got my root there. I don't need that. Um, so we replace. So we got Lato now, and let's just see what our site looks like. Okay, and that's fine. Everything looks as it should. Is it Lato? All right, we're now in Lato. But now let's see what this looks like if I. Oh wait, I also have to. I have to. I have to download the thing because uh, it's just loading from the browser default. So I need to then download my Lato. I'm going to extract it, open. Wonderful, there they are. Um, we're gonna go to our, you're gonna create a fonts folder. And we're just gonna remove these because we don't need them. And then we're gonna take these and put them in here. Now our fonts are locally hosted. So we have them in our fonts folder. The uh, like it already it already sets the file path for us. Like here, we can set our file path and how we want it to look. And there it is. So it's it's basically going slash fonts, and it already sets it up for me. So there's not much else you have to do now. Now these are locally hosted, and let's just check to see everything looks all right. So um, oh, that's not that one. This one. There we go. Now we got our Lotto. This is our official Lotto. Um, and just for a test, let's, um, let's remove this. All right. And just act like we only have, 
we only downloaded this one. So let's also remove it. Oh, that's the wrong folder. Fonts. Let's also remove the bold from here. And you see, this is the browser. Um, this is still bold. This is the browser interpretation of bold. Um, let me try. I want to do something really quick here. So they're going to undo that. Um, and we're going to undo that. We're going to save uh, added fonts. I'm going to see if I can show you if we can see a difference. So I'm going to push this, the new fonts, we got the fonts, um, and we're going to add them to the to the local, like the actual site here. And then I want to do a side by side of the, uh, the if we didn't not, if we did not download uh, the 700, if we only got away with using the, the one, uh, the regular normal font weight. So let's, let's refresh this. Uh, okay, we're Lotto. Okay, now we're good. So let's okay let's remove this again yeah, okay. okay remove that again we're gonna save and then our fonts let's kill this again okay and so this there we go okay so this is with the uh, the font subset downloaded for uh, 700 so if we download the bold version too, this is what it looks like. And then this is what it looks like if we just let the browser kind of do its thing and, and figure it out for itself. Well, let's take off the, there we go. So as you can see, it's, it's uh, where's the next bolded one right there? For Lotto, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, so I think with, with a Lotto, uh, we can get away with, um, not having to download the uh, the bolded subset, so that we can save on uh, uh, some megabytes there or some kilobytes there, because uh, that is also another big issue there is just how big your fonts are. Uh, and then another thing we do, uh, we we need to preload uh, images and our fonts. So like up here. Uh, what helps uh, for PageSpeed as well is this this landing image right here, this little mobile guy. If we do a preload on it, um, then that will actually improve your PageSpeed scores. And I have that code here. Where's my preload? Um, preload images. There we go. We're going to take this. And under my CSS, I'm just going to put it here. This is where I'm going to pre I'm going to preload some stuff. I uh, and we're going to do um, slash images slash landing webp. And we also want to do that with our font. So I need my preload for my font. Uh, where are you? Add you in here. That's it. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to grab that from one of my other projects. I'm just gonna zoom up here really quick. Uh, open, open this one. Let's just grab it. I'm just gonna grab it real quick from another project. There we go. Okay, so here's our font, and we're going to choose the font that, um, if you have two of them, like maybe this is one, and this is uh, two, then you'd want to you want to preload the fonts that show up on load. So right now we're going to do slash fonts uh, slash. Uh, we want to do the walk to. So now this will preload our fonts and our background image. For improved page speed, uh, so that's at, especially at my job. This is what they're recommending us do now: is we preload our landing image, put it in a web, make it into a webp, and then we preload our fonts. Uh, this will help improve page speeds. Not like we need it, but 
um, for in the future, this is what you should do. Um, I have I wasn't taught this in any tutorials, so I wanted to make sure I included it in this one. So we're gonna, we're gonna save that. And gosh, I can't think of anything else that we need to do other than uh, so like if you, if if you need to put an image in here, <laughs> um, you need a link. So what I do is it's kind of a quick and easy way. What we're gonna I'm going to use the desktop version. So if we go to Hero, here's our image. And when it's live, uh, actually, I'm going to close this out. I need to go to the live image. When it's live, it will give you the, uh, the actual like URL of where your, your uh, picture is hosted, which is right here. So this is the, this is the URL. So if I copy that and paste it out here, I'm just going to get that. So what I'm going to do on my on my images for my social media display, I'm just going to paste that here. I'm going to paste that link. Sometimes it's going to be a cloud fair link with some weird numbers, etc. Or sometimes it'll be nice and easy like this. Uh, and then I just put my website here, description and title. And then when this when this uh, this link gets shared on Facebook, it will populate with that image, text, title, uh, and it'll it'll look nice. So that's that. Now, is there anything else? The canonical, like the actual website. Now, this whole thing with HTTPS, www. That's where it's going to go. Um, there's no www. Dots on these Matlify ones, but this is what it should be for your, um, your rel canonical at the top. And then when you do do um, Google Analytics, don't put it at the top because it'll it, it's, it's a render blocking script, so it'll prevent the rest of the page from loading until it's done loading. Put it at the bottom, and you'll notice, like down here, you'll notice a uh, increased page speeds really quick right there. So that's the other um, advice I can give you when you get that Google link, see you know, the Google uh, Analytics link or script or whatever that they give you. When you create that, you put that here at the bottom. Um, and then I think that's it for now. Uh, that, that's it for like you know, quality checks, optimization, um, you know, creating your site map, how to download and preload your fonts, uh, locally hosting your fonts, images, converting the WebP. I mean, even, shoot, I'm at. I might even just say screw it and just go complete balls to the wall and and uh, convert all of my images to WebP and just get even better. Uh, it's just just to be the perfectionist in me um, and know that I did everything I could to make this site the best as it could be. Then yeah, I think when this video is done, you don't need to see me do it again. Uh, I'm gonna convert these to WebPs. And they will load even faster. My page speed will get even faster. Um, yeah, I'm actually I'm pretty happy with this. This is uh, it always feels good when like when you finish the the site and it already is like perfect, um, except for some of those accessibility checks for the for the color contrast. So uh, with that, that is it. Um, excuse me. Uh, sorry, I had breakfast. Little, I always eat before I get on a microphone. I gotta not do that anymore. Um, but that should cover everything. We we built this whole thing with with my template. You know, we we have our about pages. Uh, I just gotta I just gotta clean this up. This has a margin top value um, because this is this is position fixed. So the margin top, um, the old navigation was taller. So this margin top is pushing all this content down so that it starts right at the bottom uh, instead of having this, like this about would be like right here, right underneath it. So I just had to push it down to get out of the way of this since it was fixed. Uh, but yeah, all, all of these are already already done and built. Uh, I just have to, you know, make a couple fixes and add our, and, and our content 
and our website's done. I already sent this link over to my copywriter, and all of the all of the dummy text that I have here, she's going to fill in for me uh, based on the uh, headings that I put here. So she's going to write it all for me, and that saves you so much time. Uh, just find a copywriter. I, I found her on Fiverr. Uh, there's some actually, you know, Fiverr is a cesspool of mediocrity and crap, but if you can sift through that, you can find some really amazing people. Uh, and I found her. She uh, had a lot of qualifications, uh, like you know, went to college for journalism and, um, and English and communications, uh, you know, worked at uh, in a newspaper for years, et cetera. So you want to look at the qualifications of the people you're you're wanting to work with. And I usually work with copywriters that are based out of the U.S. or the U.K. Um, they're great with the, with the, uh, uh, the natural language um, and kind of just knowing what we want uh, when we're reading copy. And they're great to work with and talk to and, and bounce back and forth. And they do great work. So um, you know, do your due diligence. Find someone in the U.S. or U.K., uh, I haven't heard there's some good ones in the Philippines as well. They they uh, they write and speak English very well. I think it was the Philippines. Um, but that's just me. That's just who I try to target because those are the ones that I've had the best experience with. Um, so get yourself a copywriter. It's like 150 bucks for a thousand to fifteen hundred words, and that's basically a homepage. So that's all of this, uh, and that's 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 time that I didn't have to spend doing it. So uh, highly recommend it because it'll save you time and what they write will end up being better anyway. Um, like I, I can try and spend my time and write something about cabinet manufacturing, but at the end of the day, I don't know what I'm doing. But she will because that's her job. She knows how to write and research and investigate and do keyword analysis, and, um, how to use non-competitive keywords in your content to rank for these keywords that you want to hit and, and eventually, you know, your website will rank. So invest in a good copywriter so that you can just build a website and send it to them and move on. So that is it. Uh, I'm gonna actually have to find a better quality image because this is shit. Um, this is this is too grainy. I, I, I'm not gonna accept this. So um, that's the hardest part is getting images from your clients. They're, it's hard. I, a lot of times I, I, I'm resorting to stock images for like these big hero sections and backgrounds. Because they're just not, uh, you're not going to get a high enough quality picture from them a lot of times. Um, and since my clients are across the country, I can't just go do it myself unless I just go down. I mean, if I really can't find any, if they can't give me anything, I'm just going to go down a rich neighborhood on the water with these big mansions. I'm just going to take pictures myself uh, and just use them. Uh, this one helps because it's in town. So it's not like it'll be too hard for me, but I think that's it. I'm not going to drag this out anymore, I swear. Uh, but this is this is my workflow. Uh, hopefully, uh, you've learned something something watching me uh, go through from start to finish and uh, kind of explaining everything I do and why. And if you have any other questions about the way I work or uh, why something I did worked and, and for whatever reason the way I explained it was not uh, is not getting through to you or not getting across or you're still having trouble. Uh, just leave a comment. Uh, you know, let me know what you're having trouble with. I'll be happy to answer because uh, I know it's hard starting out, and there's not a lot of uh, good content out there that will show you to do it this way. So, <clears throat> um, hope you enjoyed it, and I'm gonna wrap this sucker up, get all the rest of the pages going, and then uh, tie this in a nice little bow and send it off. So, and on to the next. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Um, I will see you guys in the next series. I got another, it's a uh, medical, I got another medical, it's like a medical staffing company that I got. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to do that one next or I have another one. So we'll see. It, uh, it all depends on, on the on the schedule, what I do next. So we'll, I'll, whatever it is, I'll just see in the next video. Uh, so thanks for watching. Psych. Uh, no, not done yet. Uh, so that font style master that I was telling you guys about, I did some more research on it and I found something. Uh, so you just upload your font here uh, that is in your project folders. And then you just put in the one of the 12, I think 18 fallback fonts. And you can find them here. Um, 
at this web address. And this is the list of them all, of, the, of all the, uh, the browser defaults. And then this is what they all look like. So um, I'll just go through and I'll try and pick the text that most uh, likely matches with what I'm doing. And then there it is. And then um, I picked, so I picked Arial because I thought that looked pretty close. And this is Arial. This is lot. This is the Lotto font that I chose. Uh, looks pretty close. It's just you see, it's at the same font size. It's just a little bit smaller. So I think I have to go to seventeen. Um, and then if we line it up, oh, I'm gonna get a new one. It's empty. It's the wife texting me. If we line up the line height, that's about right. So I think my line height, what I did in the in the code is I made the line height for this P tag, the specific P tag uh, right here is like 1.49M, where this is 5. So it just needed a little less. And when I did that, and I added the fallback, uh, let me, this is another one. Where's my cup of cup? So right, it's my font size on the bot, right here. I did Lato and then Arial instead of Helvetica, whatever the, uh, the default is. So I put Arial and then my P is 1.149. And when I did that and saved, I got no more no more CLS. So I think it was like 0 0.004 before. And now with that, it is zero. So uh, the speed index is still pretty dang good. Everything was pretty good on here. We're still at 100, but we got rid of that cumulative layout shift, all because we set a fallback font and we adjusted the line height so that it matches about right. We just You just got to match it. Uh, so this, yeah, this, uh, meowney.ca slash font style matcher, go here, uh, and see if you can match your fonts with one of the, uh, 18 or so, yeah, 18 browser defaults and just try to match it. And that will reduce as much as you can the, uh, the layout shift that happens when you, when you swap out the text. So. Uh, so there's that. I just wanted to show that to you at the end that uh, to, to fix that, there is a way. And I wanted to find out the way, and I did. So there's the way. That's how we uh, fix that CLS from the, the, the text right here. So uh, with that, now we're, you know, this is, I mean, I think this, this is as good as it gets. Uh, I don't know how else to improve this uh, other than making all the other images on my website WebPs, uh, which they WebP format, I think they load 1.5 times faster than your traditional JPEG. So uh, on top of having a slightly smaller file size, they load about 50% faster. So if we make all of our images WebPs, then maybe this, maybe this will even get even faster. Uh, but that's it. That's it for the optimization video. Uh, if you just build your websites the way uh, I built it, uh, then you shouldn't really have much to do at the end here, which is the case. Uh, it was already at 99. You just made a few tweaks to you know pump out that 100 because it feels good. Um, so that's it. And uh, I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, hopefully you guys you know learn something from here or enjoy it or. I you know, like watching the process. Uh, so um, with that, I'm not going to make this any longer than it has to be. Peace.